The Reformed Gamers is brought to you 100% independent and ad-free thanks to our dear patrons over on patreon.com slash the Reformed Gamers. To get yourself sweet, sweet perks such as early access to all of our episodes, special episodes of the podcast, and more, head over to patreon.com slash the Reformed Gamers today and consider lending support to the show. Without further ado, let's hop into the show. Hello and welcome, dear listeners, to episode 136 of the Reformed Gamers, a show all about theology, video games, Raccoon City, and anything else that we can think of. I'm your dear commander host, Logan. And I am his co-host, Adam. You know, I said this pre-show, but it seems like the days, the weeks are getting longer when, uh, you know, when we record these shows now. I'm starting to lose it, man. I'm starting to lose my mojo, like in Awesome Powers 2 when he lost his mojo. I'm starting to lose my mojo. I just realized that's kind of probably an inappropriate reference. What a but, movie. I, mean, I remember I went ahead. and saw, man, so little story. So when I was in fifth, sixth, seventh grade, I basically had the same Sunday school teacher. It was my sister-in-law's mom. She, Her name mm-hmm. is Miss Sue. Everyone knows, that's what everybody calls her. She's Miss Sue. Miss Sue. And so she just Shout kept out. moving up with us, moving up with us like every year. She wasn't supposed to be with us every year, but she just got stuck with us. And so I've been like super close <laughs> to her for a really long time. And me and my buddies, we really got into Grand or uh, to Grand Theft Auto. Uh, <laughs> we really got into Austin Powers and Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> yeah. Well, they've got that uh, the car that was in the original Austin Powers is in the original Grand Theft Auto. But Oh, that's um, funny. So yeah, we got in the Austin Powers, the first one, and then the second one came out, and my buddies they went and saw it like they were ridiculous with it. They saw it like three times in the theater, but I went oh, once, wow. and she was like, she wanted to go with us for some reason. Our Sunday school teacher, <laughs> and we're like, we knew her. We're like, you're not gonna like this movie. Like, she is very yeah. conservative. Like, and so, but she, she for whatever reason she went with us, and she ended up walking out like crying mid-movie because of how bad she thought now we stuck around because we didn't have a good conscience <laughs> um but of course you, did. you look back at those movies and you're like these movies are so trashy like they're not even funny they're like cringeworthy oh yeah but we thought it was yeah. funny as middle school boys um yep but yeah that's yeah my short austin powers mojo story by the time that you uh, traumatize your Sunday school teacher. That's great, man. Great way to start the show. Uh, so we do here at the Reform Gamers. We like to traumatize our Sunday school teachers. We show them Mortal Kombat, all the fun fatalities. Yeah. And then they pray for us, and we uh, we get in trouble. Yeah, that's what we do here. Anyway, dear listeners, hello and welcome. So good to have us both back on the show, uh, this episode here. Real quick, before we jump into anything else, a little bit of housekeeping, as always. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but we have the we have a, a sub button on Twitch now. That's right. If you go over to twitch.tv slash the Reform Gamers, and if you have a free Twitch Prime sub, you can subscribe to us on Twitch, send us some free money, and support the show that way. There, it doesn't even cost you a dollar. If you have Amazon Prime, you have a Twitch Prime account. And what that means is you have a free sub that you can give to a streamer of your choice every month. So why not head over to twitch.tv slash the reform gamers to consider giving us your free Twitch Prime support. One other thing I do want to highlight is some new content is coming to YouTube. A uh, friend of the show, Wesley Ray, hooked us up with the capture device thing. I'm slowly getting content uh, recorded for Tales of Vesperia, Wargroove, Fury. We're going to restart that series and bring it back and get that going on the website. So we'll be uh, hopefully sending that stuff out. Mm, maybe not next week uh just because i'll be going away to a conference for uh, several days so uh, maybe not next week but maybe the week after so we'll just have to kind of play by ear see if you i mean if you subscribe to us on youtube and hit the bell icon you'll be notified of when we upload it and you'll be able to check that out for your viewing pleasure so subscribe to us on twitter subscribe to us on youtube all the fun stuff links will be in the show notes Without further ado, Adam, good sir, let's get into the show. Hello and welcome to the Reformed Gamers. Let's start the show like we always do with a little bit of what we've been playing and what we've been reading. And I can't believe I said that without messing up. Adam, man, you handsome bearded man, what have you been playing? Man, I tell you what, life has been crazy. 
I haven't been getting to mm-hmm. play as much as I would have liked to have been playing. Because you keep watching Austin Powers. Yeah, I've been trying to get my mojo, my gaming <laughs> mojo back, baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. Uh, oh, boy. Hey, oh, yeah. Okay, we're, we're done. Uh, <laughs> no more. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, we talked a little bit pre-show. I've been playing a little bit of that PlayStation VR. Me and Micah, the PSVR bros, mm-hmm. got to play some some more of the firewall zero hour i got me the playstation aim controller and that thing is dope if you got vr and you're trying to play firewall farpoint any shooter type game man the gun makes it about 10 times more fun it's so much more immersive so much easier to aim you don't feel like an idiot putting your controller up to your eye trying to aim like it just feels dope and so i've been playing that uh getting pretty good i mean you're playing 4v4 i had a three kill game the other day and i'm like flexing all over micah um he's just <laughs> dying left and right and i'm like dude come on no i'm kidding he did pretty good uh throw him under the bus a little bit but it was a we had a great time so hopefully we'll get to do some more of that in the future uh started up that uh good old hollow night i know you're a big fan of the game mm. uh, a lot of dear listeners mm, are love big that fans. game it's been good um I had to finish up Ratchet and Clank 2, so I finished that up, and now I'm into Hollow Knight. And it's been, I mean, it's been a good time. I've enjoyed it more than Dead Cells. As I look at the indie games that I have on my Switch, Dead Cells never really grabbed me. I I didn't like continually going back to the beginning of the game. I know the whole, all the different things with that, and people can say, get good, whatever. I just, it just wasn't for me. I didn't like kind of that grinding aspect. But Hollow Knight's been good. I haven't got to the really difficult part yet. I mean, I think I am. I just got to the fourth area, maybe. But I didn't find, like, a boss in the last area. So I'm still figuring out some of the different... Like, I'm still really just figuring out the game some, probably in two hours. But uh, more than that. I'm probably four hours into the game or so. But it's good. It's a good time. I haven't got to listen to the soundtrack as much because I've been playing it with my wife around. So I need to get that, get those headphones in because I know people say the soundtrack is is excellent. So uh, mm-hmm. hopefully going to get some more of that. And that's kind of my travel game. So we got spring break coming up here soon. It's going to be the game that I play when I'm on the road. So I'll get more use of that. And I've just been so tired. I haven't been playing really anything in bed. So uh, yeah, so that's that's Hollow Knight. But the main game that I've really been focusing on uh on the playstation is kingdom hearts three uh i can't mm, remember i don't think it, me and micah i don't think it had come out last time we me and micah recorded i know we've done a patch notes mm-hmm. and some bonus stuff but i mean it's good it's more kingdom hearts i have no idea what's going on in the story they keep bringing all these uh final fantasy characters in and i'm like i have no idea who you are you all look the same uh, <laughs> I hear that's a common common uh, theme amongst all the the things I've hear I've heard about this. Yeah, game. they just say some crazy things. They're like, "You can put your heart in a robot and it will be alive, just like you and me." And I'm like, "What is going on? Like, <laughs> who is like all of these weird characters?" And so, uh, and who is Organization Thirteen? I'm like, I have no idea. Let me just get to this crazy cutscene. And then let me go and basically do all of these amusement rides when I'm fighting these nobodies or whatever. Like, it's crazy. But at the same time, it's pretty dope. The nostalgia of Disney movies makes it, like, worth my money. I've been to the Toy Box. I've been to the Tangled World. And I'm about to go to Frozen next? Or Monsters, Inc. And so... Mm, you're gonna let it go yeah it's apparently they basically play the whole let it go song in in the game so that'll be interesting and they keep looking around there's like goofy in the middle of the song so <clears throat> sorry but it, um what else do i have to say about the game i've enjoyed it i'm slow rolling it i'm not in any hurry um i hear the last five hours is a lot more fun story-wise it's a lot more focused so I'm excited about that, but I'm I'm glad I'm playing it. It's not a game that I'm like sick of. Like when I when I get around to playing it, I've enjoyed it. I think the Toy Story level went a little long, um, mm. and so that kind of drives out a little Toy bit. Story, though. Yeah, I mean seriously, how do you get too much Toy Story? That's the thing. It mm. looks so real. 
Like it, it felt like I was playing the Toy Story movie of sorts. Like mm. the the voiceovers, all the voice. They have a lot of the like official voice actors in the game, so the voices sound great. The animation looks amazing. Uh, I mean, it looks like a Pixar movie. I mean, it is that good. So all of those things. I mean, it's your 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 eyes take a trip. I mean, when you get when you do some of like the major moves. Now it's a little easy because of some of the additions that they've made. Uh, the combat is I can either spam X or once I get some of these special kind of combat things, which are basically these amusement amusement rides from like Walt Disney World. I feel like they're a little OP. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've really I don't think I've died yet. And so the bosses aren't very hard. But again, I'm not super worried about that because I don't want it to be that difficult. You know, I want to just be easy, get the story that I don't understand and then move on to the next game. So <laughs> I'll let my difficulty come when I try to play Resident Evil 2 next. Um, there you go. But it's, yeah, it's good. I'm really glad I'm, I'm playing it. Uh, I know a lot of the dear listeners and people in the Facebook group have already completed it, and they seem to really love the ending. So I'm excited to get there. So I think, I think I'm 10 hours in, and it's a 30-hour game. So I'm about a third of the way through. And uh, nice. hope, I want more time with it. Like, again, life's been crazy just with this season mm -hmm. of life. So I haven't been able to game on my PS4 as much as I'd like. But as soon as mm -hmm. things begin to slow down, that will be the game I go to, like, first and foremost. So I'm excited to get there. So, yeah. Cool stuff, man. Yeah, I saw some uh, people post in the Facebook group, them getting the uh, Platinum Trophy for uh, for that game. I think I saw Alex Hooper get one, get his today. So congrats to that, man, and uh, anybody else that got the Platinum. You know I am about the Platinum Trophies. Uh, I don't care what game you're playing. You know, as long as you get the platinum, I'm, I'm cool with it. Well, don't play My Name is Mayo. That's a cheap, that's a cheap platinum. You don't need to do that. You don't need to solo your trophy list with that. But ain't nobody got time. No, that's that. good stuff, man. Ain't nobody got time. No, ain't nobody got time to touch that. Like, you want to touch a can of mayo, you just go buy a can of mayo. I'm talking about platinum. Ain't go. nobody got time for platinum. You're over there. Oh, like, everybody got time you're for like platinum. negative 14 and backlog golf. I'm like negative two, and I'm that's like, just how I roll. Gosh dang it. I need to, I roll. I'm playing games, but I can barely finish them, let alone complete them. I don't know, man. Well, as uh, as Elliot Hillis over at Coiny Geek once said, uh, I get the platinum trophy before he even gets past the loading screen, so he must be playing Anthem. Yeah. Oh, uh, hey. so uh, <laughs> we'll get into uh, we'll get into what I've been playing before people get real mad at me. Um, I have literally been playing nothing but Resident Evil Two for the past several weeks now. Um, it is. I don't even know. I don't even remember if I talked about this in the last episode or not. But Resident Evil Two, guys, this is how you remake a game. Good night. There's so much content in this game. Did get the platinum trophy for it, and man, was that a uphill battle. Um, word of caution to those of you out there playing it, maybe going for the platinum trophy. Um, hardcore mode is going to be the toughest thing you do in that entire game. The enemies are going to hit harder. Uh, you're going to get hit way harder um and it's gonna be it's gonna be brutal uh but it is doable you can do it um look up some videos look up some guides you guys will be able to get through it overall though i have thoroughly enjoyed this game i have probably put close to 30 if not 40 hours into this game just trying to go for the platinum and after i got the platinum i i sat there and looked at the game looked at my platinum bragged to the internet who doesn't care and was like, I want to play more of this. Like, I want to go through the story again. I want to play some of the other modes I didn't get to play to get didn't get to play through. I want to play some of the uh, free DLC missions they just released called Ghost Survivors. I haven't tried that yet. It's and, and again, I know people are, people are going to probably roll their eyes at this, but this is my favorite game of the year so far. It is it is incredible. I mean, I'm, and I'm not going to hide this. I'm not going to make any bones about it. You know, the game is graphic. You know, when you're shooting zombies in the head, and it, it, it gets pretty gross. Uh, it's almost in Mortal Kombat territory for me, so I'm, I'm not going to make any bones about that. So I'm going to say if you are squeamish at all or if you uh, do not like that kind of content in your games, definitely avoid this one. Uh, but for me, I man, I really enjoyed it. I hope Resident Evil 3 gets this kind of remake treatment. I hope Resident Evil Code Veronica gets this remake treatment. Really, really well done. I enjoyed unlocking the... the oh, what's it called? Um... The uh, not the character models, you get those two. The uh, concept art, that's it. Really cool stuff. There's some uh, neat artwork in there of different character models that they didn't even put in the game that you can unlock. So it's really, 
really cool. I really, uh, really enjoyed that game. It's, it's fun. The way they do the scares in that's really good. I think they said something about a uh, Resident Evil 3 remake already, didn't they? I know I've seen some like stuff going around saying that they are working on it. But Nothing official. You know, it's one of those things where like I, I want to see it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I want to see like even just a title screen saying, "Hey, this is it." You know, we do it. Uh, as they said when they announced the Resident Evil Two remake. But yeah, ever since then, I've gone down the Resident Evil rabbit hole. I've been looking up so many lore videos on YouTube now <laughs> of this of this series. Uh, looking at people speed run the game. I watched a guy beat the beat Resident Evil Two in like under an hour, which is insane. I think my fastest time beating the game uh, with Claire is like an hour and 44 minutes. So it's, it's cool. There's a pretty good speed running community out there that I've enjoyed uh, watching and interacting with. So all I'd say I've really enjoyed Resident Evil two. I would love to do an episode on the, on the game or even just the series as a whole, really, really cool stuff. And really something that kind of struck me is that, you know, people highlight this game as, as oh, it's scary because of the zombies or Mr. X t- uh, chases after you. But, man, there it goes so much deeper than that. There, there's a scene, and I won't go too much into it because of spoilers. There's a scene you come across with a, a father and his daughter who's actually turning. And it's in that moment there I, I realized, like, dude, this is the true horror right here, that, that the evil of men created this chaos and unleashed it. And now it is ruining the lives of other of everybody else. And man, there's just there's some cool parallels that we can get into uh, in that game. So man, it is it is something else. Yeah, I'm excited is, to get my hands on it at some game. point. Well, excited and scared. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, I, I'll, I'll be honest. You'll be scared. You you really will be. The first the first time you play through is Claire and Leon. I mean, I don't know how you're going to approach the game, but the first time you play through is Claire and Leon. It, it'll it'll definitely scare you really really well. Clear, but it's a mixture of both. There's so many jokes, so many jokes I'm thinking of right now, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go that route. Uh, but yeah, dude, it's it's really, really, uh, it's a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed my time. I kind of hate that they made me pick uh, my wife just male and female. I feel like I should be able to choose a gender neutral character. Our case of this Here we game. go. Here we go. <laughs> I went there. I knew you didn't want to. So I went there. I didn't want to. I'll <laughs> let you go there, man. We start off the show with Austin Powers. Now we're just making these kind of jokes. This I'm is, there, though. Uh, Adam, what have you been <laughs> reading, man? I see you've got some Bible in there. Let's go there. This is something <laughs> edifying, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nothing like me making a, a gender identity joke and then getting into Hebrews chapter Oh, four. man. Uh, no, yeah. So oh, I've been man. in, just in my quiet time, has been reading through the book of Hebrews with, uh, again, I quote these guys all the time the christ Center exposition series commentary is my go-to and so it's just been great i mean looking at the priesthood looking at christ as the greater king the greater p- priest all of these things um, and then i get into chapter 10 and just again so so good i could read the whole chapter but uh, i want to look at verses 11 through 14 i'm just going to read them real quick and it says and every priest stands daily at his service offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for a time those who are being sanctified. Uh, and so, just in, and I want to read even a part of uh, what the commentary says here. It's a, kind of a longer section, but I won't add much commentary to it personally. Um, it says, at the heart of these distinctions are two kinds of priests, priests who stand and the priest who sits. Verse 11 details the inadequacy of a priest who's, uh, of priests who stand. Under the old covenant, priests stood daily at God's service, offering the same sacrifices repeatedly. The, sac- the sacrifices could not take away sins, yet they continued to offer them. They stood every day because their work was never completed nor did their uh, work progress. This is why the priest stood each day offering the same sacrifice. Their ministry had to be repeated over and over again, generation by generation, and it could not save a single sinner. Verse 12 details the priest who sits, Jesus Christ. Once Jesus offered a single sacrifice for the sins that was sufficient for all time, he sat down at the right hand of God. This is known as the session of Christ. It It means Jesus is seated in authority, and power at the right hand of the Father and carries out the ministry of intercession for God's people there. 
waiting for the day his enemies are made his footstool for his feet. The priests who stand offer many sacrifices repeatedly. Jesus, however, only offers one sacrifice. His is sufficient to take away sins forever, and, it, and its benefit never ends. Jesus sits because there is no need for him to keep standing. His atoning work is completed, and now he intercedes for us. And so, as I was reading that, just because at the beginning of the chapter, it, it kind of goes through talking about shadows and continual uh, sacrifices. Some of what those verses, verse 10 kind of talks about, talks about it's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. And so it keeps going over this. And then you get to the point of, a, again, that holy conjunction of but. You know, in the New Testament, it's always it's always so good. Sometimes in the New Testament, it's not always the best but. But in the New Testament, it usually is a good thing. It says, but when Christ had offered his sacrifice, he sat down. And so as I was reading that, I was just thinking like, man, that that authority, that finality, that completion of, I just think of, you know, when I come home from work after a long day, I just get to sit down because I'm thinking, man, my work is done. It's completed. I can rest. And Christ doesn't necessarily rest. He's still interceding for us. But just that idea of finality, when then you think, you know, you consider that against the priests who, you know, are constantly standing daily, sacrifice, 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 day after day, day after day, day after day, blood, 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 all of these things. Just that continual work part of that contrasted to Christ saying, like, you know what? It was a heavy sacrifice, no doubt. It was costly. It came at such a great price. But he did it once. It was complete. It was sufficient. It was enough. And then he sat down just that, like, like what a power move of, by, of God, of Christ. And then continue on talking about him. You know, eventually his enemies are going to be made his footstool. He's just waiting. It's not like an if, it's a, it's a when of that. And then just that, that finishing up in verse 14 of he perfected, you know, for, for by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. Again, just that idea of completion for us. And so, um, you know, for Christ, one time was enough. He didn't have to do it multiple. He was perfect. He did it. And now it's not like our sanctification is something that is up. For those who are, you know, up in the air, for those who are in Christ, you know, perfection is it's an objective eschatological reality that we will one day achieve in glorification. And as we experience that now in sanctification. And so it was just, it was just a real blessing to get to read that thinking of, man, of what a mighty God we serve who, you know, if not for Christ, there would still be priests sacrificing continually for us. Um, and again, I could talk about this on and on, but looking back even at, I think maybe chapter eight or nine, where it talks about, okay, or maybe even the beginning of chapter 10, it's like, these sacrifices, you know, they didn't forgive sins, but they held off God's wrath. And so sometimes we think of the Old Testament, that sacrificial system of like, oh, they did that and it was forgiving their sins. Like, it, there was an aspect of some reconciliation of sorts, but it was more of just withholding God's wrath, if you look in Romans chapter 3, talking about that. But man, like the finality and there's no more withholding. God poured out his wrath. God's not just holding his wrath off against us. He has poured out his wrath that we were due on his son so that we can be seen perfectly in Christ. And so it was, it was good stuff. Good stuff. That's it. That's what really well, stuck out to me over the last couple of weeks. That's good. Yeah, man. That's good. Good. Good stuff. Well, as far as what I've been reading, um, dear listeners, I want to say this uh, at the outset. Of it. Oh, I'll just say the what I've been reading, then I'll get to the the disclaimer. I uh, started a new book this past week called Nine Common Lies Christians Believe by Shane Pruitt. Uh, before I go any further, I just want to let you guys know that uh, I know Shane personally. Uh, he's worked with me on a couple of youth events. Um, and, um, and so I, and I'm also part of his uh, book launch team. So you guys take everything else I'm about to say for what you will. Um, but I will talk a little bit about the book. I will say this, I'm about 65% of the way through the book now and really, really digging it. Um, basically what, what it is, is he's taking a lot of these common cliches you hear in churches among Christians and stuff and, and really kind of going, okay, is this actually biblical? Um, so he goes after uh, different cliches such as follow your heart. Um, God gained another angel. God just wants me to be happy. 
Um, but the first one that he tackled is, um, is, and I'm losing it all ready, but so he, he's, he's tackling these different uh, things. And like I said, he's bringing them back to the Bible. Um, and one of the things that he did in the first chapter was he was dismantling this idea of God doesn't give you more than you can handle. And so he's breaking it down. He's like, well, the, and he starts it off with, well, really, this phrase isn't even in the Bible. A lot of people tend to get it confused with 1 Corinthians um, 10, 13, I believe it is. Yeah, 10, 13, that says, you know, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure. Now, you, you, and when you look at that verse, too, you might be like, oh, well, God, God isn't going to tempt me. And even that statement there, you can't say that because in First John it says that God tempts no one. Okay, you gotta you gotta remember here in this text it says God does not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. So this is talking about temptation. Okay, and a lot of times we hear the phrase of uh, God doesn't give you more than you can handle when it comes to I don't know. Let's say uh, a new job. Um, you're going to a new school. You are taking on a new project or something like that. You know, and so you think, oh, well, God doesn't going to God isn't going to give me something that I can't handle. Right. Well, there's the problem in the phrasing is that you think you're doing it in your own power. And, and he breaks it down. He's like, you know, a lot of times God gives you more than you can handle. So you lean on him so you don't get the glory. And he does. And I really loved how he kind of ended. Uh, he ends each chapter with a a, a phrasing to kind of. Uh, think about and and be encouraged by, and in this one, um, in this one, talking about you know how God doesn't give you more than you can handle, He ends the chapter um, by saying, sometimes God gives us more than we can handle, but He never gives us more than He can handle through us. And I'm gonna say that one more time because you kind of have to think about it. Sometimes God gives us more than we can handle but he never gives us more than he can handle through us. And if you stop and think about that, like, okay, what, well, what God can handle anything. So if God can handle anything and he's calling me to do something, so he works through me. So he gets the glory. Well, God can do anything. So that means he can do anything through you. So if he calls you to do, maybe be a, a missionary to share the gospel to someone at McDonald's to, I don't know, start a podcast where you share the gospel or something it's probably going to be above you, above what your capabilities are. But if God's the one leading you to do it, then it's going to happen. God's going to make it work, which is cool. I actually really, really um, enjoy that. And it's so true. I mean, we, we've even lived this out with this podcast here. I mean, we didn't, we didn't know what we were doing when we started it, but you know, here we are, what, three, four years later or something like that. And <laughs> Right. <laughs> in a lot of ways, we're still yeah, trying right. to figure some of this stuff out. We're still learning about new things. But um, but that's the thing. If God calls you to do it, you don't gotta be wor- you, you don't gotta worry about failing. You'll you'll probably hit some bumps in the road, you'll probably roll with some of the punches. But God's with you every step of the way. If God's calling you to do it, he's working through yeah. you. So you don't have to worry about it. You're good to go. You know? So I uh like I said, I I really am pre- uh, really oh gosh, words are hard. There it is. I am really enjoying this book. So again, dear listeners, like I said, I know I know the author, so you can take my uh, my thoughts uh, for what you will. But like I said, it's 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 solid stuff. That's nine common lies Christians believe. It early reco uh, for the show here by Shane Pruitt. All right, uh, so let's get into the topic of the show. We sent a uh, question. We were going to do this last episode, but because of schedule conflicts and stuff, we weren't. Uh, we, we pushed it back one episode. And so we are going to answer some of the questions brought to us by the patrons. Patrons kicked the door down, brought these questions before us and said, hey, here's some questions. You should answer them on air. And you're like, ah, all right, that works. So I'm going to answer some of these questions here. And uh, see what we come up with. So first question comes from Alex Casalanos. Once again, thank you for submitting your questions. What do each of you want to see grow the most with TRG in 2019? Some examples include YouTube presence, listenership, social media presence, Twitch streams, anything else, etc. All that fun stuff. And then we'll get to a second question after that. So Adam, man, in 2019, 
what do you want to see grow the most with TRG? Yeah, I think the thing for me and my involvement with it, because there's some of these things, um, sure, we would love to see if it's beneficial for more people to be listening to us. YouTube presence, Twitch stuff. I know you do a lot of the heavy carrying, you know, lifting there. Uh, but one thing I'm hoping to be better at this year in my involvement is kind of partying up with some of the listeners, some of the patrons. Uh, I know life, my schedule is crazy, but there are some games like Division 2 that are coming up that I'm, I want to play with people, and hopefully there's going to be some listeners and patrons who uh, are getting it. And so hopefully being able to schedule that time in to build more into the community, pour into that, build some of those relationships. I know even with Alex, I've got to play uh, some games with him in the past. And I mean, Micah, of course, and some of the different ones and Skinner and Luke. I mean, and it's it's been great. I mean, that's what the podcast is about. That's what the group is about. Is As much as it's talking video games, it's getting to do that with other believers and talking about life and seeing what's going on in their stories and, and things like that. So that's one thing that I'm really hoping to get to do better at. I mean, honestly, I know basketball is going to be finishing up in the next couple of weeks here. And so hopefully getting some Apex Legends in with some of you guys. And then once the Division Two hits, I'm really hoping to, I'm going to throw it out in the Facebook group. Uh, I know my schedule is I play a lot of afternoons, so that can be hard. I don't get a ton of evening time. So, yeah, I know I haven't been great at that with my schedule, but Lord willing, I'll be able to pour more into that if I focus up on it some. So, again, I also have a daughter, so that makes things a little bit more and hopefully more children in the future. But I'm, tr- I'm going to try, dear listeners. I've, I've kept one of my promises over last year. I said last year I want to hit 80% of our recordings. I'm pretty sure I did that last year. So this year I'm mm-hmm. aiming for playing with you guys more often. And so we'll see if I'm able to hold up my end of the bargain this time. Right on, man. Right on. Uh, I think for me, I want to uh, become, I want TRG to become the Christian IGN. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, like, kind of maybe not. Anyway, my main thing, I really want to see our YouTube Twitch presence grow. Um, obviously, because I said at the top of the show, we're going to have some videos going up, uh, doing different things with that, because I, I really want to. You know, I mean, here, here's the thing. Our, our show, we have two episodes a month that we put out. And then, of course, if you're patrons, you get, um, depending on your level, you get extra episodes of the show. But I want the YouTube thing to, and Twitch even, to be even more of that, of kind of maybe being a form of encouragement or a way of helping you think deeper about the games that you play and maybe getting some of those themes out of the game as well and just giving you an insight on some of these games like should you pick them up should you even buy them are they worth your time i don't know we'll find out together because it it, i mean there's so much content out there right and i spent this past week just looking at so much stuff on youtube about resident evil about anthem about all these different games and i'm like This is great, but man, I would love to hear how some of these games, like some of the stuff that you see in these games, I'd love to hear the discussion on this stuff from a biblical worldview. And I I don't see any of it, you know? And so I'd I'd love to kind of put that out there. And so hopefully that's what we'll be able to do um, over the next few weeks. And and really what was really cool was this past stream that we did uh, last week, actually. Uh, when we were playing Hollow Knight, we got to talk about Reformed theology, got to talk about what that's like being at a, at a Southern Baptist church and sharing Reformed theology and if there's any pushback and what what, what are some of the, the I guess, hurdles you, you kind of have to jump over to to do that. Uh, and just talking about like what, what it's like to build a community of teens that aren't afraid to ask questions and get deep into the Bible and, you know, what are some of the ways that, that I've done that? Um, so, so it's cool. It, it, it's a resource, you know? And so I know some of our listeners are youth pastors and hopefully that stream there is uh, helpful to those of you that maybe just starting out or been in youth ministry for a while now and you're trying to figure out how to do these things. So definitely uh, YouTube and Twitch is, is my main focus uh, this year is, is getting that uh, more fleshed out and getting it, as a resource, yeah. I guess, for, for folks as well. So now Alex also asks, this is a dangerous question, man, but I'm glad you asked it. Also, favorite ice cream topping. 
Adam, man, what do you what do you put on your ice cream? Or do you kind of do, do you just got do you keep it original? Or you keep it vanilla? I'm a what pretty do you plain do, Jane. Um, honestly, what I do mm-hmm. with ice cream, if I eat ice cream, I'm not a huge ice cream guy. I kind of always joke with people and said I'm a popsicle guy more than an ice cream guy. Mm, I remember that from from the time that we yeah. roomed together. And so, yeah. but what I do with my ice cream, I like a good like vanilla bean, and I'll put it in my coffee. So I'll just mm. get like a couple scoops, Ooh, there you go. put it in a cup, pour some coffee over it. And kind of let it cool my coffee, eat the ice cream, drink the coffee. So that's that's what I, I kind of do with my ice cream. If I'm going to put a topping, I'm a marshmallow guy. I just it can be the little mini ones. I don't care if they get hard. I like marshmallows in about everything. And so mm-hmm. I'm a kid at heart. Will always be. Right on. We uh we had this thing when I was in grade school. Uh, every so often. We would have these things uh, called, what was it? It's like worm pudding or something yeah. like that. And basically what it is, is you'd get the ice cream cone, right? And you'd put chocolate pudding in there. You would stick a couple gummy worms in there. And then you take crushed Oreos and put it over it so it's kind of like dirt. Um, I like to kind of recreate that with my ice cream. So I'll get like either vanilla or chocolate. It depends on what my mood is that day. Get some crushed Oreos, put some gummy worms in there. And uh, just, you know, a little, little bit of nostalgia right there, you know, that I like to let's eat from time to time, you know, it's, it's real good. It's real good. It reminds me of, uh, simpler times, you know, when I wasn't an adult, didn't have bills and all this other stress going on, you know, the only thing I had to worry about was whether or not I'm going to finally be able to get past that level in Lion King, the, I can't wait to be King level. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. So, so that's what I would do. Get a little crushed graham crackers, uh, or crushed, uh, Oreo cookies, drop them in there get some gummy worms uh which kind of almost have to eat it quick because if the gummy worms get too hard it's like it's not much it's not as much fun anymore but so um, delicate balance you want a brain freeze or do you want a hard gummy worm choices 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 so good stuff man alex thank you for your questions micah hendrick acts acts asks his question is what is your favorite game you have never played or in other words what's the game you most regret not playing and man, I'm going to be honest, I had a hard time thinking of games for this one. I don't know about you, but I couldn't really think of anything. I can think, I think we've talked about this kind of in the past on kind of our, like, what do you call it? Like our shame backlog, like games that we never played that everyone else played. Mm, yeah, backlog pile of shame episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, I think of some of the Final Fantasies, but those aren't games that I really, like, wish I would have played. You know, I thought maybe Fallout, mm-hmm. I've never played any of those, Fallout 3, Fallout 4. But oh, wow. the game that I landed on, because I think this is a game that I would like the most, it's on PS3, so unless PS5 is backward compatible, I don't know if I'll ever pull out my PlayStation 3 again to jump back into it, but uh, Kingdoms of Amalur. Um, it's one of those games that Ooh, has got a that? big, you know, kind of a cult following, uh, just with the Kurt yeah. Schilling, like development, all this the drama that went on with that, and how they went bankrupt and lost all this money, yada, yada, yada. But it's one of those games Mm -hmm. that, you know, I didn't really have a PS3 until really like two years ago, two and a half years ago. So I didn't really have a way of playing it. I know it was on 360, but I wasn't into those games when I had my 360. I was playing mainly sports games, Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty. I was a very different gamer at that time of my life. So, um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm like, the more I hear people talk about it, I'm like, man, I hope that game eventually maybe gets a remaster. Or is PlayStation 5 backwards compatible if that happens so that I can get around and play that? But that's one that I think that I would probably enjoy the most that I never got around to playing. Yeah, man, that's such a good game. Mm. Man, that's a throwback right there. I actually uh, just thought of one sitting here listening to you talk about that, kind of thinking about that time frame of. Uh, Xbox 360 and even a little bit earlier with the GameCube and there was there's one game that I have never played and it, and it comes up every now and then in the group and people just love this game and, and talk very highly about it to the point where I'm like how did I miss this game uh, when I had a GameCube and that's Skies of Arcadia I believe it's mm-hmm. called um, kind of like a, a traditional JRPG that takes place in the in the sky like uh, Sky Pirates and and things like that. And so I never really got to play that game. I always saw it in the video store. So I could have rented it several times. But I never did. So I kind of I kind of regret playing that. I don't know if it's on Steam or not. I'll have to check that out. 
now that I bring that up and think about it. So definitely Skies of Arcadia. And if I'm getting the wrong title, dear listeners, you let me know. But I'm pretty positive uh, that's the one that's talked about every now yeah. and then. And so Skies. Yeah, I think there's a lot of games looking back I wish I would have played when I was a kid. Like now as an adult, I don't think mm-hmm. I'll ever go, go back to them. Like, again, I wish I, I was to a degree a different gamer back then. But like I think of like Chrono mm-hmm. Trigger. I think of some of the Final Fantasy like six games. Oh, yeah. Like the games that took forever on like the Super Nintendo instead of just like <laughs> me and my brother constantly yeah. playing each other and like NBA Jam or Madden, which was fun. I mean, great memories of uh, in our childhood. Um, not just playing stupid arcade ga- type games on there, but having getting more into some of those story based games when I was 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, you know, all the games that I give my nephew a hard time about not wanting to play. I was the same way when I was a kid. I'm like, no, I don't want to play that. I don't want to play something <laughs> simple. I don't care about, I don't want to read text. But looking back, man, I wish I was yeah. into those games more. And at this point, it's just so hard. I mean, I could. I've got the SNES Classic. I've got ways to do that. Right. But again, there's new games coming out now that I feel like we need to play. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was about to say, do you even have the time to to go revisit yeah, those or, or revisit those for now, the first I'm time? Like yeah. over here. And again, with good things, like they're not yeah. bad reasons that I can't game. Like God has been gracious. It's just right. you know, priorities. Right, right. Right on, man. I hear you. Micah, thank you for your question, man. Uh Wesley Ray asks, and this is gonna be the title, this is the title of our show. Uh, his question is, what would it take to push you out of gaming completely, if anything? Yeah. Adam, what would it take for you to just quit gaming? I was, like, almost, I was wondering if you were going to take the segue. I kind of gave you a segue there. You know, life. You gave me a segue and I missed it? You know, I'm not very observant. You can ask my wife. I'm talking about these good reasons why we're not playing games. You know, it's like God has given me a family. He's given me, you know. My wife, my daughter, hopefully again, future children, a great ministry here at the university, opportunities to coach. And so, um, like, to a degree, I think I think just off the front end. Uh, and this has been, I think, something that a lot of men, if you grew up being gamers, once you get married, I think it's some things that you wrestle with of, okay, can I justify playing games now that I'm married if my wife isn't a gamer, if she doesn't like me gaming? Is it something that's beneficial to our marriage? Now, that's been something we've had to learn and grow and figure out, okay, how do I do this well? How do I balance my time? How do I take care of responsibilities first? So uh, all that to say, I think if gaming really began to be such a distraction that I was not fulfilling my responsibilities as a husband, father, uh, you know, disciple of christ i think that would have to be of course issue number one and um if it's really taken away i know we've had different guys in the group take gaming sabbaticals uh i think it was what dakota who was kind of like i'm going to step away from gaming for a while um, while i prepare for marriage and Mm -hmm. again very honorable not everyone is called to that but i think it's a very honorable thing if you feel like that's the direction the lord is leading so there's been times where i've had i've like legit asked him like I don't think it should get to this point. I think that we should be able to figure out other solutions, but do you want me to stop gaming? Like um, gaming? I love it. It's a, it's my, it's one of my main hobbies, but if it's going to bring a division between me and you, I will get rid of it. But again, hopefully we don't have to get to that point. So I think if something gets me out of gaming, it's not going to be because of something. I don't think that we could work out. It's just going to be a time thing. Like uh, as my kids get older and hopefully I get to help coach them or get more involved in church with them. I, uh, I'm, I, I just, I just, that's what I think pushes me out is just a busyness of life and then wanting to love on my kids and my family. And hopefully again, it doesn't ever get to that point, but I think that's what would push me there. Yeah, man. Uh, I would honestly echo a lot of that. I was going to make some kind of like pithy joke about like if games just all have microtransactions and loot boxes in them at that point, I'm like, nah, I'm done. But I think on the same way and and really over the past few weeks, this is something I've kind of noticed starting to happen a little bit more in my own life is there's some nights where I just, I don't, I don't really want to game. You know, I don't really, 
feel like playing anything, you know, I, I want to watch some YouTube videos that I've, I've put built a queue up of, um, dealing with different things that are going on in the world, different, uh, news related things, uh, different scripture things, but shout out to Apologia for continuing to put out resources. I appreciate that. Um, you know, or even just, just reading or just doing other stuff, you know, and, and this is something I, cause I've started weeding out some of these games already in my life. Games like Anthem, Destiny, Fortnite, those I just, they're just time sinks, you know, and, and my time is way too precious to, to continuously to dump into these games where I'm not really making any progress. Uh, I want to enjoy the the games that I play in my time, but I think for something that would make me just stop playing completely is, I guess two things is Adam, you, you brought up, you know, family uh, priorities, uh, things like that. But I would say that if it becomes an idol really, and to be completely transparent, you know, there's been a couple of times, even when we've been doing the show where it, it has become that. And you know, my wife and I have had to sit down and, and talk, you know, should I, even be gaming anymore you know does does trg kind of need to go on hiatus uh in order for me to to kind of get over that and so um that, that that's the thing is you know someone posted in the facebook group um someone asked john piper about uh you know how to break my addiction of, of playing video games and of course john piper doesn't like video games but I think he hit it on the head is, you know, if it's if it's getting in the way of your duties, if it's getting in the way of your priorities, if it's getting in the way of you really just focusing on God, then you need to take Jesus' advice and cut it out of your life. You know? And uh, I don't know that I've been that that uh, that dedicated uh, in the past. Yeah. And so, you know, one, one of those two things uh, would definitely make me make yeah, me quit. Was, you know, as you you know wrong, I, I was thinking like the other side of that, that would be. Also, the number two is like, if I'm wanting to play so bad, and it becomes like just a rat race. And again, sometimes the group has become mm -hmm. a temptation to do that. You know, when I first got in the group, it's like, yeah. I got to keep up. You know, I got to play all the new games. I've got to do this. Why? Because I want to act like I've got some knowledge. And so if it becomes that addiction, that addictive type, oh, I just got to keep up, got to keep up. Even for the podcast, you know, like this is a good thing. But if yeah. it becomes idolatrous to a point where I'm playing games and doing all these things, neglecting family, friends, ministry, because I've, I feel like I've got to do this podcast so perfectly and I've got to play all the games, that's a game when we have to consider, okay, is the podcast a good thing? Is It, it may be good for our listeners mm -hmm. to some degree, but is it at the cost of our families? And again, we're not there, but just an awareness to that idolatry of where we can abuse anything and we can put it, if I'm putting it on a platform to a degree that is unhealthy of where it's all I'm thinking about is consuming my thoughts, consuming every free moment I'm reading, I'm researching, I'm just doing all this stuff. Okay, maybe I am putting this in a place. Okay, is it robbing me of my joy? If I'm not getting to play as much as I want, I kind of talked about that at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah, I wish I could play more, but it hasn't been robbing me of my joy. My joy is still, I think, been mm -hmm. properly placed in the right areas. But if it gets to a point where I'm like, forget all that other stuff, the only thing that gives me happiness, the only thing that gives me a sense of completion or joy or purpose is video games. Or okay, I'm I'm to a point where I gotta, I gotta make some changes. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of the nice thing about the show, at least the community surrounding it, is that you know we get that that you, the dear listener uh don't put that kind of pressure on us and really you, you've never put that kind of pressure on us um if we ever start feeling that way that's that's something that, that we're putting on ourselves that we don't need to uh but yeah it's it's one of those things man it's one of those hard calls you got to make it's one of those times where you got to reflect and you know and ask yourself is the is this um oh, what was that thing i told my students uh the other night it's i can't remember where the verse is from exactly but it is in scripture um that that asks you know what is what is it worth if you gain the whole world let you lose your soul you know i remember challenging my students with that you know you got to ask your question you know what is it what's the point of of overfilling my schedule if it means i lose my soul in the process or if i you know fill in the blank so it's definitely something to kind of uh, keep in mind as well so i think i think those would be uh those things there 
So Wesley, thank you for your question, man. Really, really good stuff. Uh, Luke Strain, moving on to you, good sir. He asks, which, <laughs> which Smash Bros character is most like each of Jesus's twelve disciples? Um, I'm gonna say Waluigi's a little bit like Judas. He's a little wily, a little sneaky. You never know what he's up to. I mean, that's why they didn't put him in Smash Brothers. He's not a, a good. Uh, Moral character to look up to. Wait, is Wario in that game too? No, no, no. I'm saying like, you know, um, that's not what I'm saying. Oh man, I feel like I just put myself in a hole. Adam, you better go, man. Before I'm, 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 you've lost me. You lost me. Judas wasn't a good example. One person. You picked the one bad disciple. You couldn't pick one of the eleven other good ones. It's the low hanging fruit. And it, oh, that's a really. All right, here we go. Here we go. I like mine. I like um, mine. Just I'm go. going with Robin. Just go. She's got some book. We're not told. What, I've never played Final mm-hmm. uh, or what are they? Fire Emblem. So I don't know what that book is. All I, for all mm-hmm. I know, it could be the Holy Scriptures. It could be the Pentateuch. For all I know, she's bringing that hot <laughs> fire out of it. She brings it down. She stores mm-hmm. it up and she zaps people with it. I mean, she's got a sword of truth. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Does she have a, ble- a breastplate of righteousness under there? I don't know what's under her clothes. All I'm saying is, she's got that. She's got some holy book that she's reading out of and bringing mad power and fire, that hot fire that we preach on Sundays. And so, all I'm saying is, if there's somebody who I'm nominating again, it could be totally blasphemous. Who knows what's coming out of her book? It could be demon worship. I don't know, but. With the, you know, she's got a, she's a, she's devoted to scripture. You know, we just got to get her to the right scripture. You know, let's get her devoted to the right scripture. She's got, you know, maybe she's not, she's not going to be a pastor because she's a woman, but get her in a, I was about to say like, Adam, are you advocating for female teaching, pastors get her right in now? a teaching <laughs> position, you know, where she can still teach and she can proclaim some truth. Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of potential in Robin. I really see that. Okay. 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 I'm going to say this. This is kind of an easy one. I'm actually going to go with Link. Because think about it. Okay. They're wearing, Link, Link wears a tunic. You know who else wore tunics? The That's disciples. The you know what else the disciples did? Carried around. Well, they didn't have. Well, they had swords. But if you think about it, they carry around, they carry around the sword, you know, the, the bane, the, the bane of evil or what? No, evil's bane or whatever the nickname is for the master sword. You know, wielding that, cutting through lies, cutting through sin, cutting through evil. They got the shield to protect himself from the fiery arrows of the devil, as it says in Ephesians 6. You know, all that stuff. I forgot what else Link has. Link has a hook shot, right? Or did they take that at away? one point, God, anyway. uh, Christ does tell us disciples not to, not to carry, like, don't take any money with you. And Link's always got a little pouch full of all these rubies and pearls that he's collecting. That ain't right. It's true. He doesn't That's have faith. He doesn't but have he faith. Casts those he doesn't aside, have faith you know? that the Lord's going to provide for him. Mm, snap. Now he we're getting real deep into this. Okay. So, these are some mm, old wide, These are some old He's, he's smashing you know, idols, he's man. Like, these are some old pots. I'm, don't put your money in a pot. <laughs> and he does a service to the community. He cuts grass, you know? He's a good man. He's a good... Good man. I literally can't think of anybody else. I mean, you could think of Dr. Mario maybe because he, he heals people and it's kind of a shadow of, you know, the great physician. It's not the great physician, but, you know, he's, he's pointing to. Yeah, I'm looking at the list of characters would. now. Um, There's nobody that really sticks out to me. Yeah, you know. Maybe so, Isabella just because she's a good neighbor. You know what I'm saying? Who's Isabella? Um, uh, who's Isabella? Uh, what's the. Dang it! The Nintendo game where you basically build a house. My mind is. Yeah, oh, she's Animal she's Crossing. A good yeah. Neighbor. Okay, I know who you're talking about now. I know who you're talking about now. Oh, I can see that because <laughs> she literally <laughs> is your neighbor. That's funny. Um, cool stuff, dear listeners. You let us know because if we keep going, I don't know what kind of hole I'm going to dig myself into. Luke Strain, man, thank you for your question. I know we talked about this in the Discord already, but it, it still wanted to bring it up. Uh, Skinner says his question is. Um, have you felt more convicted about certain series that you used to love as your sanctification has continued? Also a good one. 
Adam, are there any game series that you're like, I can't, I can't play this anymore or anything like um, that? Or you felt convicted in a little way. I've got a few I can think of. I was, as I was thinking about it, I said, I don't think it's, I don't feel convicted with the game itself, but I think I would I have to be careful with, I probably play them differently. Um, you know, I think of like Grand Theft Auto, not that I did all the bad things that you could do in the past. Like I wasn't just going in the bad areas and paying for this and that, right. but we're typing in the dodo car to drive a tank and fly yeah, off I'm and maybe shoot the not just yeah, being quite as violent of a character as I probably could be and stuff like that. You know, the language aspects of games, probably the violence part. Again, it doesn't. It's it's fake. It doesn't bother me as much. Um, I avoid the mm-hmm. sexual content usually as much as I can, of course. But language is one thing that probably has the ability to affect me more than anything. Uh, just with the temptation of, you know, using language in a joke I shouldn't, or in anger potentially saying a word I shouldn't say. Say I'm not usually someone who, well, I'm not. I can't, I'm not a person that usually uses a lot of vulgarity, but a video game could potentially add to that. So I think of games that have like GTA that have a lot of that. I was trying to think of some of the other games uh, recently that I've played that have had a lot of that. Um, but other than, I mean, again. I can I can see why we've had a lot of these conversations in the Facebook group over sexual content. I think if it got outrageous over the top uh, in some games where it's unavoidable, mm-hmm. okay, I need to really consider if I should play it at all. Like not even I can't look back and say I don't go back and play a lot of games more than once anyway. So, <clears throat> but right. you know I would really need to second guess how I'm playing the games, what games I'm playing. Uh, so that's kind of how I would approach that question. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. Dear listeners, I think you, really long time dear listeners will know uh, some of the games that I would bring up. Um, games like Mortal Kombat, I personally have a hard time playing um, just because it seems like they kind of revel in how violent they can be. And I'm like, eh, I don't, I'm not really all about that. I'd rather play Injustice, you know? You have Superman punching Batman. Uh, improving that Superman would actually beat Batman. You know, I prefer that kind of stuff. Also, you know, I gave up playing Resident Evil 7 whenever that came out because it just got too graphic. And it's kind of ironic that I say that because it's one of our goals on uh, Patreon that we hit 30 uh, uh, patrons on there that all stream the game in VR. And, you know, it's it's one of those things where, uh, like, I'll do it because I know it's going to be funny. But I don't know that I'll necessarily like continue playing it or or keep uh, like I'll finish it or anything just because it's it, I know there's no really like spiritual stuff going on. I looked up the story synopsis. It's all like ESP psych, psychotic, not psychotic, uh, psychokinetic powers and things like that. So I know that's what's going on. There's mind control going on, but it's still just it's enough to kind of make me uneasy, you know, and so I don't really. I don't really uh, look forward to playing that. Maybe I'll maybe I'll switch it to a different VR game. Maybe I'll play like Archangel or something. But um, and even with um, what's that game series, Dark Siders? I used to really uh, enjoy playing that game back on 360 when it came out. Dark Siders one and two. I know the third one came out recently, but over the past few years, I've really tried to get back into those games, and I just I can't do it. There's something about. Um, and I know this stuff is is loosely based on on biblical uh, principles, but just just the idea that you're bartering with a demon using souls to buy upgrades, yeah. I'm like, I don't I don't like that at all. That I just that makes me feel weird. Um, you know, when I whereas when I was younger, I just didn't think about it. But you know, uh, now that I'm older and have gone through or have been you know a Christian a lot longer than then, uh, it it definitely rubs me the wrong way, and I. I I really do have a hard time playing those games. I, I, I've tried, like I've said multiple times, I own the remastered versions and I've tried playing those and I just, I can't, I can't do it. I'll maybe get an hour in if that, and then I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, that, you even got I me can't. thinking with, I can't play um, like, um, dang it. It's a new sacrifice. Like the reason, like oh, that yeah. game was hard for me to play just because of how dark it was. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, there wasn't like over the top yeah. violence, but when something that like bothers me, I think of some of the TV series, like the first season of True Detective. I don't know if anyone's ever seen that. There's some inappropriate scenes, of course, but it was extremely 
dark and like dark magic voodoo like all this witchcraft like that stuff is hard for me and like it just it's unhelpful it can produce i know hannah struggles with nightmares Mm -hmm. and things like that um think on what we're taking and so i think if there's something like really like that like i never finished it i got pretty close to finishing sinua sacrifice and i'm not saying it was a bad game it was just really hard for me because of what was going on in the story it was just so dark and like like demonic yeah. in really ways a lot of dark. um yeah because the closer you get to the end you're really coming face to face with that darkness yeah. that's been chasing her the entire yeah, game i mean so, it yeah, gets, i, I, I get it hannah at one point it's like what the heck are you playing i'm like i have no idea like it gets really <clears throat> yeah. yeah really rough yeah, I think I know exactly what part you're talking about. Um, so yeah, but yeah, it's 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 definitely that, and I, and I find myself gravitating more towards kind of like the brighter games, um, games like Spyro, Mario, Zelda, those kind of things, because it's just they're more lighthearted, you know. And and when I play a game, um, I don't necessarily want to be stressed out. I did enjoy Hellblade because that's like you know dealing with mental illness, and I'm like, oh, this is really cool artistically. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, I, I want to play Spyro or something like that, a little more lighthearted um, and not as serious. I'm not saying like games can't deal with like heavy themes or anything. It's just, you know, just kind of where I am, where I am right now. That's what I gravitate towards. So, so anyway, there you go, Skinner. Great question, man. Dear listeners, you let us know uh, what you think. Uh, about these questions if you have any answers and things like that uh before we end this episode uh we need to thank our patrons for supporting us over on patreon.com slash the reform gamers guys thank you so much for your support this past month we want to thank you from the bottom of our heart uh those patrons are alex casolanos alex hooper austin goudeau caleb schmidt christopher commander code missing cody dean colin gregory david skinner Derek coppinger Derek smith eric bryant gareth evans jake walker jeff wofford jesse penu josh broccolo luke denner luke kelly luke strain mark fromey matthew mcdougall or matthew white chocolate mcdougall however you go by that micah hendrick michael toller ryan 1701e are you an android your robot computer program maybe i don't know let's know jet islander podcast wesley ray dude if i mess your name up i'm really sorry xavier medina that dude, that dude's a bro I mean, he's, he's like he's yeah he's dude. hooked me up with uh he hooked me up with like a gift card the other day just because he's like hey i want to bless you and i'm like dude I'm like, what a bro here. what a I I gotta, guy me and him we've been trying to connect in some gaming he's like hey add me and i'm like He's like, oh, we're already friends. So I'm like, I need to play some Apex with this bro. Uh, yeah, he's been, yeah, he's gone out of his way a couple times to just encourage us, not even just with the gift card, just with like, hey, I appreciate the podcast. So, Xavier, dude, yeah. appreciate it. It goes a long way. It's just an encouragement. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Also, Zach Buchholz. Guys, thank you so much for supporting us over on Patreon.com, helping us uh, keep the controllers charged, keep all the stuff going, and yeah I lost the third thing i was gonna say but guys thank you so much for that we appreciate that guys dear listeners as always if you like what we do here on the show you can head over to patreon.com slash the reform gamers to consider lending your support to the show uh even support as low as a dollar a month goes a long way in helping us uh, continue what we do here on the show keeping us ad free and all sorts of fun stuff like that plus you get sweet perks like extra episodes of the podcast early access to all the episodes um access to our patreon discord channel where we talk about theology Funko Pops, really anything we decide to talk about that day. Um, so yeah, head on over to patreon.com slash the reform gamers if you want to support us. Uh, and then if you don't want to support us, that's fine too. I mean, you can support us through listening to the show, telling your friends, rating and review us. Review, yeah, reviewing us on all those things, you know, subscribing to YouTube, all that stuff, sharing the episodes with your friends, and all that other fun stuff. But before we let you go, as always, some recos. Adam, bro, potato chip supreme. What should the dear listeners check out? This is kind of out of nowhere and kind of old school, old news, but it's something that has been on my playlist <clears throat> for a long time. I don't know if you guys have listened to that uh, Into the Spider-Verse soundtrack, but it is dope. Mm. It's so good. I'm not going to lie. I, I listened to that the other day. Actually, I think that movie comes out tomorrow. Is it the, really tomorrow? 
Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure I'll double check iTunes as I'm looking this up and talking about that soundtrack. Cause I, li- I listened to that the other day. I can't remember if it was you or who it was. Someone was telling me about it and I was like, all right, I'll go listen to it. And I listened to it. And I'm like, you know, I don't really listen to mainstream rap a whole lot. You know, the Wiz Khalifa, little Yachty, all those people. But I'm like, this is yeah, pretty I can't good. Tell you, this makes me want we watch. watched the Grammys a little bit and I'm like, I have no idea what's going on in the mu- music industry. But I knew after I saw that movie, I'm like, mm-hmm. I gotta, I gotta stream this, and then I got it, and it is so good. Like, there are some just hype songs, and as a basketball guy, I'm like, half that soundtrack could be on a high, like a warm up track for like a, a basketball team. It's so good, and it's clean. It's all about Spider Man, mm-hmm. and so you ain't gotta worry about something bad being in it really. But it's it's great. Good stuff. I can't find the movie on iTunes now, so maybe they took it off and uh, they're not going to let me watch it. But I'm pretty, I think I swore it was coming out at the end of February. So we'll see. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Dear listeners, as far as my records go, um, so here's the thing. This this reco I'm going to give you, you'll have to uh, be careful with some of the episodes you pick. But I came across this uh, YouTube channel called uh, First We Feast. They host this show called Hot Ones, where Sean Evans, the host, brings on a celebrity of some sort and does an interview, really good interviewer, actually. And they eat a series of increasingly hot and spicy wings. And it is one of the most funniest things I've ever seen on YouTube. They've had people on there like Gordon Ramsay, uh, Weird Al Yankovic, um, Jeff Goldblum, Michael Sarah, uh, Michael B. Jordan. Uh, oh, what's that guy? Uh, Chris Jericho, the wrestler. You know, it, it's funny stuff. I will say this though. Again, be careful with what episodes you pick. Cause some of them have a lot of language in it. Like of course, Gordon Ramsay does. Cause that's just what he's known for, but it, it's funny. And it's really cool. Kind of getting to learn about some of these uh, different celebrities and the different things they do. Uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, Philip DeFranco was actually on there too. And uh, it was really cool. Listening to him talk about politics, news, how you should get your news from literally all sources and then have your own opinion. Uh, so it's, it was cool. Really cool stuff. It's the show with hot wings and even hotter questions. That's hot ones on first we feast YouTube channel. You'll see a link into to that channel in your show notes also reco i shouted out earlier nine common lies christians believe by shane pruitt i'll have a link to that in your show notes as well so you can check that out for yourself and all that jazz dear listeners thank you for joining us as always already mentioned patreon so if you want to check that out it's in the link is in your show notes head over to youtube and twitch youtube.com slash the reform gamers or twitch.tv slash the reform gamers uh at least follow us on both hit the bell icon on youtube uh, if you want to give us your free twitch prime sub feel free to do that at twitch.tv slash the reform gamers and always head over to the swanky new website the reform gamers.com for articles and things like that i promise i will get um those articles up sometime in march <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get them done and just things keep coming up and I keep hitting uh, writer's block and uh, I promise you I'm working on them, uh, but I'll get those up over there. You can always get show notes and access all of our older episodes on there as well. Follow us on Twitter, a TRG podcast, like us on the Facebook page, join the Facebook group, answer all three questions and uh, interact with the community of dear listeners. Without further ado, until next time, dear listeners, GG and amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of the reform gamers. This show is brought to you independent and ad-free thanks to our lovely dear patrons over on Patreon.com. The following people are at the producer level or higher on Patreon, and we'd like to especially thank them. Those people are Alex Casalanos, David Skinner, Eric Bryant, Gareth Evans, Luke Strain, The Jet Islander Podcast, and Wesley Ray. Thank you so much for your continued support on Patreon, and thank you for encouraging my addictive habit of getting platinum trophies. GG and amen.